Hi, this is Adam. This is another Eye on North Carolina blog. We're here in Durham, North Carolina at Counterculture. I'm really excited to be here. We've been traveling all over the state going to different coffee shops and now we're at one of the biggest wholesalers in the area. We're really excited to take a tour and we're going to interview Hannah who's going to tell us more about Counterculture. So how long has Counterculture been around and how long have you got? How long have you been with them? Great. Um, so we are almost at our 20 year mark. We've been in operation since 95 here in Durham. And this is our headquarters. We have eight other sort of uh, regional places that we operate out of as well and do education and barista training. Um, I have been here almost two years. Um, really happy about that. Yeah. And what can you tell someone who doesn't know too much about coffee? I think that um, really the best way to sort of start tasting things is to think about everything that you eat or drink, you know, and just kind of talk about it with friends because it's really just about vocabulary and kind of connecting what you taste to that part of the brain that, that knows what you're tasting. So, you know, if you, if you have a delicious soup, kind of just talking with someone about what that soup tastes like is the best way to start thinking about the flavors. Great. And, yeah. and you mentioned about the tastings. When do you guys have the tastings to the public? Yeah, so we do a tasting every Friday at 10 a.m. Um, and that's in each of our training centers, like I said. So we have eight different places, and you can check it out on our website to uh, learn more. And so I know you distribute to local coffee shops. Individual people purchase counterculture coffee? Absolutely, yeah. And the best way to do that, again, is on our website. And we've kind of just done a website overhaul, so I definitely recommend uh, spending some time with that. Um, but you can do kind of a six-month subscription. You can order um, just based on the coffee that you want. Um, and that's, that's the easiest way if you're not sure where locally to purchase the coffee. Great. Yeah. And what is the one of the biggest challenges you guys have right now in terms of producing, um, you know, and distributing? What's, what's one of the challenges when you're out in the public you know, with reps and trying to get your coffee out there? Gosh, that's a good question. It's not really a question for me. I work more on the sourcing side, so I work with producers. Um, I think that, honestly, just sort of consistency and messaging, I think, and, and making sure that we're a good fit. Um, you know, we're not for everybody, but I think that we offer a very unique product, and so kind of just, just getting that message out is important. And you described it as unique. Is that due to the sustainability that you guys pride yourself on? I think that's definitely a piece of it. You know, we have sort of a, a threefold uh, mission, which is quality, sustainability, and education. So I think that um, what we offer as a company is definitely a little bit different than um, other companies. So on the coffee side, yes, you know, picking coffees that are sourced sustainably, um, having sustainability is sort of a thread throughout the business, um, and obviously quality as well. You know, the coffees that we buy have a very you know, specific parameter as to what we're looking for. And then the education piece is something that I think we're really well known for um, across the country, just being able to educate um, folks at the shops that, that are, are serving our coffee. Yeah. And can you uh, describe one of the sustainability practices that you guys participate in? Um, sure, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think I mentioned on the tour that we purchase about 80% of our coffee is organic. Um, and so sort of being committed at the farm level to uh, practices that are good, you know, for the environment and good for the farmers themselves, um, kind of gaining a greater understanding of that and, and with our buying uh, power supporting that. Well, thank you, Hannah, so much. And uh, thank you for giving us a tour. And I learned quite a bit here at Counterculture Coffee. Good. Thanks thank for you. coming. Two or three coffees side by side. You know, in the morning you just have the one you know you like. So today on the table for you, we have a coffee from Burundi and a coffee from Rwanda, and I've written them on the board as a back if you want to check that out. So the first one is called Mpemba, and the second one is called Romera. Um, and I'm going to walk you through sort of the, the regular cupping process. What we did is we, we weighed out the same amount of coffee into each cup. Everything is the same, you know, so that you can kind of pick out if there's anything different, you know, it's the coffee, it's not your brewing method at all. Um, so there are about five or six steps to this process that I'll just kind of talk you through and we'll get close because there's so few of you, so let's kind of get close together. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assess the fragrance, which is the smell of coffee when it's dry. So you just give it a little shake and inhale. Um, and you can do a, a number of them if you want to kind of start to, to it's really just the first thing that comes to mind usually because the vocabulary is hard to attach, but don't think too hard about it, just do that and then move on to the second set and we'll talk about what you found. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's like the little one that you said you wanted to Great. We're just starting to, um, again, like explore another layer of what that coffee has to offer and once 
all the water is in the cups, we'll bring our noses down to the surface and smell what is referred to as the aroma. So it's just another um, kind of check off on our list when we're assessing coffees to look at what that coffee has to offer. An incredibly aromatic grouping of uh, CO2 and molecules of coffee that are just ready for you to experience them once again. So in order to do that, what we will do is grab a spoon. Um, we're not going to start really vigorously because that'll uh, kind of do more brewing than we want it to do. So we're just going to drag it gently like about half an inch through the top and then get your nose down because you're going to want to capture what's happening. Kind of tell you a little bit in very broad strokes what it is that we are looking for when we taste that coffee. So things to keep in mind when you're when you're slurping vigorously, which we will be doing <laughs> shortly. Um, so uh, the first thing that we look at is sort of the uh, obviously the the brightness of the coffee, which is kind of just another way to think about the fruit characteristics that are there. Uh, does it make your mouth sort of pucker like a lemon, you know, or is it pretty mild, more like an apple or a banana sort of acidity? And for different reasons. Um, you know, different coffees are really prized for their acidity. And sometimes it's okay if it's not super bright, if there are other characteristics that really round that coffee out. We also have prepared for you, my esteemed colleagues, uh, because we know you're not going to do this at home, right? So it's kind of almost more interesting, I think, to know what you would prefer as a brewed coffee. Um, so they have done a pour over of each of these two coffees. It'll be interesting to see if you still prefer what you preferred um, here or if that shifts a little bit, but I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, and then after we taste those coffees, I'm happy to give a, a, a brief tour to those of you who are here for the first time of our roasting facility because this is the only place that we roast coffee, although we have centers at eight different places in the United States. <laughs> this is the Burundi. Yeah. If you arrived and there was a big truck here, I don't know if you saw the big truck today, we normally get a delivery every Friday. Um, we're kind of making a prediction for the week about what we anticipate we're going to need to roast um, so that we can kind of get into the freshness and, and I'll talk about that more when we get over there. But the idea is just to not keep more than we need um, at a time and we obviously don't have the space to keep everything that we have on the books right now. Um, so you can see it's separated by, by region, by country. So you know these are brewing selections. This is Maloya, this is from the Congo over here. Um, and it's also separated by organic and conventional so that we can keep our organic certification. Um, at this point, we buy about 80-85% organic. And our goal, um, I'd say over the next two years, is to buy 100% organic coffee. If you think about where coffee comes from, it comes from the tropics, right? And you know, sometimes it's in high altitudes where it's cool, but it's often coming down to warmer, kind of more humidity places, and it's it's tricky. So, um, short answer is no, we don't do anything to stabilize the climate here. So, usually it'll be a bag at a time, so a bag is about like 130 pounds of coffee. Uh, these two machines work a little bit differently. One of them has a perforated drum, and the other one has a solid drum. So we're going to have to figure out how to get these two machines to work properly. Um, we're going to have to get the machine to the machine. Well, we had a great tour here at Counterculture. I'd like to thank everyone here, including Hannah. We learned quite a bit today on the process of making coffee and how it uh, comes over here. And we want you to come out to Durham, North Carolina and check this great place out. And we hope to see you all soon. <laughs>